Let's go ahead and get started uh, on today's webinar. Uh, the focus of today is going to be the Azure Stack Mappings project that we uh, worked on here at Attack IQ with a number of other MITRE Ingenuity participants. Um, so let me go ahead and just get started. Um, the goal for today is going to be first and foremost to review the Security Stack Mappings project for Azure. Um, we'll talk about that project, uh, why it's here, uh, what it's providing. After that, we're going to review an example security protection failure. Um, what I have is as a simple example of uh, blob storage permissions uh, where access is granted and it shouldn't be. Uh, we'll take a look at that. And then with that, we'll actually go ahead and dive right into the stack mappings themselves and go ahead and find a way for us to manage that gap that we just reviewed. That's exactly what the objective of this project is for. So we'll just go through that simple example in order to highlight how you might do this yourself uh, with either the same capability. A lot of people use blob storages today or with any other capabilities on the Azure framework. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, so to start, you know, Azure resources is a shared responsibility between Microsoft and their customers. Uh, this chart here, here clearly identifies where Microsoft has a commitment and where we have a joint responsibility as the IaaS vendor and as users of that IaaS service. Uh, and by IaaS, I mean infrastructure as a service. If you see there on the left, and I, I uh, you know, if anyone's answered security reviews in the past, um, those are questions that you get asked uh, as part of that process. And by leveraging services like Azure, we don't have to worry about monitoring physical access to uh, anything. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it's gonna manage that on, on our behalf. Um, so um, uh, the other part of that though, is as we're deploying applications, as we're deploying a number of capabilities, we have a responsibility to make sure that those capabilities are being used in the appropriate fashion and that we're not deploying things in a way that are, for example, publicly available to the world. And you know, these technologies, uh, these IaaS services do provide capabilities to facilitate security compliance, security um, capabilities. As you can see here from some of their items, right? Everything from data collection, gathering insights and, and taking action are all part of the capabilities that Microsoft Azure wants its customers to realize uh, in order to meet or exceed this vision here of having a unified control over this uh, capability. Now, as organizations today, migration to the cloud continues. So the, that's one of the reasons why the MITRE Ingenuity Group and some of the participants along with the Tech IQ decided to develop these security stack mappings. Uh, and the first one that we did at this time is Azure, which we're talking about today uh, with AWS to follow shortly after. You can see that if you uh, check out that GitHub that we'll be taking a look at here shortly. And uh, part of this work was actually putting together and understanding all control capabilities available natively, uh, in this case in Azure, in order to provide that context back to you as an analyst uh, and, and, and give you that context so that you can remediate, address, or implement security capabilities within your organization. And the problem that you know this is going to solve, uh, as I kind of lightly touched on that here, is going to be the migration to cloud. Um, this is net new for organizations, so this gives them a way of understanding things. Um, you know, on that same vein, uh, you know, these controls are not very well known. They're new. Uh, you know, people are moving maybe from managing traditional SOCs uh, and now have to manage that same uh, security posture in the cloud as well. Um, today, there's no extensive resources available to close this gap today, hence why the MITRE team decided to take on this project uh, along with its participants in order to fill this gap for our industry. Um, another thing, native controls are available but not typically leveraged. Um, you know, uh, As folks are using these services, uh, they don't realize that they can take advantage of some of those native capabilities so that they can ensure that they're protected from the start um, and, and go from there. Finally, there's a lack of understanding between known attacker behavior, MITRE attack cloud, and controls, and this is going to bridge that gap so that our users know how to take advantage of it. Uh, and the objective here is to empower the organizations to better understand their posture and what's available to them, 
Specifically, we wanted to focus on providing native control capabilities so that the service that they're using today are going to be the same services that are going to provide them uh, this uh, security uh, capability. And how we're going to provide this is the stack mappings that we're taking a look at right now. So how was this actually project put together? If we take a look at the project, uh, the process here, uh, Miter did an amazing job of putting this together, uh, where you know the first step uh, as part of this research project was to actually identify the security controls themselves. Uh, again, only those native to the platform. From there, we wanted to then gather that information and then identify for each of that security control capability, categorize it, identify the types of resources that are protected, uh, and identify the capabilities that it provides. From there, we went ahead and mapped those controls to the MITRE techniques and sub-techniques that could actually have an effect on them. The other thing that was done as part of this project, which I, I find extremely valuable, and I think you will too, is beyond just providing that mapping between the control and the MITRE technique ID, also providing a assessment score, uh, where we're actually highlighting exactly to what degree that controls providing coverage. And we'll talk about that a little bit more next because it's quite important. And then finally, uh, creation of the actual output files themselves. And that's uh, a combination of JSON objects on GitHub, along with some HTML pages, a CLI tool, uh, and even uh, the ability to export MITRE attack navigator layers uh, in order to visualize some of these mappings that have been done. Now, like I said, uh, if we look at step four here, the scores are actually a critical part of this. Uh, not only is this project letting you know what control might have an effect on a given TTP, but it's gonna tell you whether that control is gonna provide protection, detection, or response. And within each of these, we, the rubric that was developed, and by the way, you can explore the entire rubric in detail uh, in the GitHub page, and I'll, I'll do a nod there when we, when we get to that part. But for each of these, we're highlighting exactly to what degree uh, that coverage is being provided, minimal, partial, or significant. Again, these are all defined within the scope of the project itself. Um, so you can see here the breakdown for protect and detect. We have coverage, accuracy, uh, and then temporal nature. And then on the respond and scoring factors, we have coverage, and then from there, different types of respond, enrichment, containment, and eradication, which again, lines up with that minimal, partial, and significant. The point being is that as you map or find and look for a given TTP that you want to mitigate with an Azure control, we're going to let you have an understanding of to what degree that's going to provide that coverage. Now, this is an example MITRE attack navigator layer where what we've done is uh, we've exported all of the mappings that were available uh, on the Azure controls um, you can actually do this yourself if you go to the GitHub project itself. And we can see here where we have, uh, you know, prevention, where we have some detection, and where we have the response, uh, you know, the purples, the blues, and the greens uh, map accordingly to each of those things that were just mentioned. Now, with that in mind, um, let's actually jump into the Attack IQ product for a little bit. I want to show you an example where we were testing some blob storages, and unfortunately, um, and by design, by the way, uh, permissions were granted to this asset that should not have been giving them the ability to access some of the blob storage capability. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that example. Um, after that, we'll jump into the, the, the project here um, itself and show you how we would accomplish uh, finding the appropriate control. Uh, and then uh, I'll actually show you how I made some changes uh, to now ensure that access is not available uh, to that specific example. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. And um, to start, I have a, an assessment that I build here within Attack IQ. Uh, this assessment is actually uh, focused on harvesting data from blob storages. Um, so for those of you that are using blob storages, this is going to be very familiar to you. And essentially, what I'm doing is uh, from a, a compute asset that I happen to have in Azure, I went ahead and I attempted to, add, first of all, identify cloud storage blobs and we were able to identify these two there. And then as part of a process, we then wanted to get an understanding of, okay, well, it's one thing to enumerate, it's another thing to actually capture and get the content. What we're able to do here, and we can take a look at what we've done step-by-step, step, is we downloaded some of the content available in some of those blob storage uh, devices. 
Um, and this is not my expectation here. Uh, this asset should not have access to those blob storages. It doesn't require it. Um, and as part of best practices, we should ensure that that's the case. Um, now, as you run into these, um, the objective of the project is to give you a resource to go ahead and figure out what can I actually implement here in order to address the problem. Now, in this case, I jumped right into one example for the purpose of the demo and focus on the security stat mapping uh, project itself. But before I move on and show you how we're going to find a control here, I want to show you that um, you know here at Attack IQ we have a number of assessment templates that are already predefined and pre-configured for a variety of different cloud uh, use cases here. So we can see here uh, anything from breaching the cloud kill chain uh, to testing a variety of other uh, cloud capabilities. Beyond the individual item that I just showed you, uh, as a product, we're continuously developing these assessments that help you understand where your gaps fall and, 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 and where you stand from, from that perspective. Now, if we take a look back um, uh, at the result that we were looking at, um, we had an issue with a blob storage uh, account. So let's go ahead and actually go to the research project itself and walk you through how you would come in here and identify what control you might be able to leverage and use to actually mitigate or have an effect on the given uh, TTP. If we go here, this is the security maps project itself. Uh, this is publicly available on GitHub. Uh, the decision was made to go with the GitHub approach because this allows something that is publicly available where people can actually introduce changes uh, as they see um, something that they can contribute, uh, but also keeps a historical record of the changes as well available for all to see. Um, before I actually jump right into the results themselves, you can see the Microsoft Azure mappings are done and that's what we're talking about today. And currently the AWS ones are actively in progress. So for those of you that are using AWS or maybe using AWS as well, um, we're gonna provide, uh, the team's gonna be developing additional resources from that perspective. Another One of the things I, I highly encourage you to take a look at here is actually the use cases. Uh, and actually I'll just go ahead and, and jump right in here for the purpose of the demo. Uh, we, we, as part of this research project, a number of use cases in, uh, uh, that this project is here to provide was actually documented, uh, and it's documented here from a number of different perspectives. So whether you're an analyst, a manager, or even a director level of a SOC, uh, we have a number of different use cases here to give you some ideas of how we might leverage this project. Now. Uh, we talked about the methodology at a high level. Uh, again, transparency is key here with this and all projects that MITRE produces. So that methodology of how this project was put together, the decisions that were made are all um, defined there. And then finally, we talked about this scoring rubric, and I really wanted to highlight this. This scoring rubric is going to give you that capability to not only understand what you can leverage, but what are you expecting from a capabilities perspective when you actually implement a given control. Um, and like we already reviewed earlier, right, we can see minimal, partial, and significant. Uh, and again, through transparency, uh, the transparency is going to make it very clear what each of those levels mean. So this is the exact same rubric that the MITRE team reviewed as they were conducting the research, as they were doing the mappings, uh, and as they were implementing this and, and, and mapping it out for you as, as, a, as a researcher. Okay. Now, finally, let's actually jump into the results themselves. Uh, one of the outputs is actually an HTML summary. Um, as you can see here, there's a number of different, uh, you know, Azure capabilities that have been documented here. As a matter of fact, there's 48 unique control capabilities that Azure provides natively, as you can see there. Uh, now, in our example here, we actually have, um, we're dealing with a blob storage. so um, what we actually have to look for, and, and you know, we can do a simple search here. Let's look for storage here, and we see here that we have Azure Defender for storage. So let's take a look at that there. All right. So here, what we can see is first and foremost, uh, those of you that are comfortable with YAML, uh, we're going to give you an output in that. But also, uh, from this perspective, we can actually open up a MITRE ATT&CK Navigator layer uh, for this or any controls, and let's go ahead and do this. Uh, and then what this is going to do is it's going to show you exactly how much coverage how much coverage this is providing. So we can see here what TTPs are actually being covered by that. Just a great way of visualizing that. If we go back, though, you can see all the different techniques, the categorization in terms of what coverage it's providing it, 
and then the value to what degree was provided as well. Beyond this, uh, every single one of these mappings is going to have a comment so that you can get an understanding about what the intent is here, why the mapping was done, um, and, and just to give you some better clarity on how to actually implement, leverage, or use either one of these techniques. Beyond this, uh, we have here then the references. We didn't want to just do the mappings and with the naming conventions. We wanted to also provide specifically, and let's go ahead and take a quick look here, the resources that you can read, leverage, and review in order to actually implement some of the control capabilities uh, that are being described here. Okay, um, so this is how not only the mappings are being provided, but actually the resources provided by the by in this case Azure are going to be linked to so that you can take advantage of them and have a starting place for implementing this yourself. Okay. All right, so that's the example that I wanted to show here uh, uh, with that. Um, so let's go ahead and now um, show you, you know, now that we've reviewed this one uh, control here, um, let's take a look at uh, an example where I've actually gone ahead and, and, and implemented um, some, some of these in order to ensure that that machine that we were looking at earlier does not have access to the blob storages because it shouldn't have had it from the start. Um, and as you can see here now, that same enumeration, which is the first step of the attack, uh, we can see here that list storage accounts is not allowed. And I actually just don't have enough permissions uh, in order to have access here. Um, so this is just a, a simple example about how we can take those control capabilities that uh, were listed, um, you know, as we find a security gap within our environment, uh, and we can implement it to find uh, and see the response. Uh, and in my case, ensure that this machine, uh, which has a very specific function and has no reason uh, for blob storages, doesn't have access as, as it shouldn't. So uh, this is exactly uh, what the objective of this project was in order to support and help uh, you as an organization uh, better understand uh, where you stand uh, and how to implement things as well. Okay. All right. Um, and. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and show you some of the other things that I ran here. Here's some other examples, uh, and then we'll, we'll stop uh, you know, here. We can see uh, some of the improvements that were made over time in terms of determining access. Um, and while I focused on one key area, which was the blob storage account, you can see that there's a number of other capabilities that have been implemented in this environment in order to ensure that a number of other controls are in place uh, in order to help support our environment and ensure that we're protected against a number of, of different things. So uh, I'll just quickly show you another example here. We're actually interacting with the metadata service and want to ensure that that metadata service is protected and no access is, is available uh, on that machine. Um, that's all we wanted to showcase for today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the chat for you all to check out. Um, so um, if you're using Azure today, if you're wondering how you might be able to implement some controls given the services that you're using, again, it's just a matter of coming here, go look for the service that you're using today. Uh, like I said, there's 48 controls here, uh, and I'm sure you're gonna find a control capability available to help protect, monitor, or respond to any suspicious behavior associated with that specific service. Um, that's all I had for today, team. Uh, appreciate your time today. Any questions? Uh, from the audience? Let's see here. All right, with that, we're gonna go ahead and, and end the, the webinar. Uh, I've gone ahead and posted this project in the chat, so for those of you that maybe uh, don't know where to find it. Um, that's going to be your place uh, to find it. Uh, any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us uh, here at Attack IQ. Happy to help answer some questions. Uh, if uh, you have any questions about the project itself, uh, happy to help. Thank you.